Well, let's get more on the MH17 tragedy from Desmond Ross, an aviation security expert who joins us now here on RT International. Mr. Ross, thank you very much uh, for your time. Um, We've heard a lot of talk recently about these flight data recorders and the black boxes. Can we talk specifically about exactly what these are and what information they store? Yes, good evening. Uh, good morning to you. The flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder are the two boxes we're referring to. The cockpit voice recorder, as the name suggests, will tell us what was said, what noises were heard, everything that occurred in the cockpit prior to the accident. That will stop. Uh, at the moment when the power goes off, at the point of impact or the point when the explosion occurred. The cockpit voice recorder has a two-hour loop, so it has the previous two hours of all noise, voice activity, air traffic control communications, etc., in the cockpit. That can be very useful in those last moments of MH17. It could even record the sound of the explosion. It will certainly record the sound of warning bells, gongs, and any comments made by the pilots. The other one, the flight data recorder, specifically records the parameters of the aircraft, its operating characteristics at that time. Uh, I would not expect there to be anything unusual on that flight data recorder up until the moment of the explosion. But it will give us one particularly interesting uh, finding, and that is the cabin. When we all fly, when you fly uh, on any aircraft in the world, the, ca the cap sorry, the cabin pressure is set to 8,000 feet above sea level, with the exception of the new uh, generation aircraft where they're setting it a bit lower at 6,000 feet. But most aircraft, 777, etc., it's 8,000 feet. Now, that aircraft was flying at, at 33,000 feet. So the sudden decompression from an 8,000 foot pressure level in the aircraft cabin to 33,000 feet would be quite traumatic. It could also be very fast. And this is what I'm interested in. I think we're all interested to know if that decompression occurred instantly or if it took a few moments to depressurize. And will this sort of information, sorry to interrupt you, up, Mr. Ross, will this sort of information be on those data recorders? They're, they're in England now, and how long will it take until we get this sort of information? That information should all be stored on the recorders, so long as there's been no tampering and no interference with them. They should be completely able to give us that information. I don't think it will take terribly long. The cockpit voice recorder will be quicker. Uh, but the flight data recorder requires specialized equipment, which is why it's gone to England, actually. There's only about half a dozen specialized laboratories in the world where this can be done. Uh, fortunately, we don't have plane accidents every day, so they don't need many laboratories. So the UK will examine that, and I'm sure it will be a very painstaking examination to determine precisely what happened in the last moments, seconds of MH17's flight. It could take weeks. OK, well, the plane we, 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 we here went off course before it came down. How normal is that? Once these routes, are, are they set in stone or is it common for, for routes to change once planes are up in the air? The, the captain of the aircraft has the complete authority uh, for the safety of the aircraft. So if he wants to divert his flight left or right of track or climb or descend from his assigned cruising altitude, he has the authority to do that with a clearance from air traffic control. So, and that occurs frequently uh, due to a thunderstorm or due to extreme turbulence that might be in the air. Uh, for the comfort of the passengers, the captains will frequently climb to get into smoother airspace or divert left or right of track. But you wouldn't do it without advising air traffic control. You, you must and always would advise the air traffic controllers, which in that case should have been the Ukrainian Air Traffic Control Center, that it was necessary for a diversion left or right of track for whatever reason he would normally state due to thunderstorm or something, whatever was going on or due to turbulence. That, so that, he would do it, but that, with the clearance from ATC. And I presume that sort of information will be on those, those data recorders. Now, we're also hearing reports that um, there was another aircraft in close proximity um, to the MH17 flight. Now, if that is confirmed, what sort of effect would that have had? And again, will that information be unveiled in those, those da flight data recorders? It would not necessarily be on the flight data recorders unless the 
pilots were aware of that aircraft and made some comment either to air traffic control or to themselves. It would not. Uh, there's nothing else uh, either on the on, on either one of the two recorders that would identify that aircraft's presence. So it's a little um, odd. Uh, again, uh, air traffic control has the responsibility of keeping all aircraft safe on their routes. They should not and would not normally clear any other aircraft, military or civil, to be at the same altitude within close proximity of another aircraft, a civil airliner. So under normal protocols, even if it was a military aircraft, which is being suggested in some cases, if it was a military aircraft, he should not have been in that airspace without a clearance from the air traffic control system. And even if he was on a military frequency, normally the military controller would coordinate with the civil controller. This is how it works internationally. So that for him to be in close proximity to a civil aircraft without a clearance and without the knowledge of the air traffic controllers and the pilots of the Malaysian flight would be highly irregular. Um, if, the, if it was a military aircraft and they thought that they were under some sort of a threat, uh, it should still, under normal circumstances, have been coordinated between the military and the civil controllers. I understand that there's a war going on there at the moment, and again, we come back to that problem of uh, the fog of war and the confusion that occurs, and who knows what was really going on. So, very, very briefly, uh, the, 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 this second plane, will there, you say it's unlikely to be uh, in the flight data recorders? Will there be anything in there that could lead to a clue that this, this plane was in the proximity or, or not, do you feel? On, only if air traffic controller had advised the Malaysian crew to be aware of a military flight that was in its proximity, or if they heard a clearance being issued to it on the radio frequency, it would only be if there was some radio conversation that would reveal the presence of that aircraft that they would know about it and that we would find that on the flight data recorder, on the cockpit voice recorder. Mr. Ross, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Fascinating stuff. Thank you so much. It, it, there's a lot more to it, I think, to come out. We'll, we'll watch this space.